All right. So we is live. Okay, let's take a look at projectile motion. Okay, projectile motion. Okay, so this is what we did yesterday. Okay, first things first, <clears throat> what makes an object a projectile? What do we say? Yeah. Okay, so uh, it does not have its own... <clears throat> capacity of motion okay number one what else yeah okay so it moves in a moves in a parabolic trajectory okay what else <clears throat> yeah okay so before we go there's something else that we could we could discuss here yeah okay so something else here for us for it to be horizontal velocity has to be constant what are we assuming does not exist air friction that's correct so we're saying air friction is negligible is negligible Okay, uh, and of course, the only force that is causing this motion is gravity. So the only force, gravity is the only force that is causing the motion. Causing the motion. Okay, yeah? Okay, so both motion of the projectile. So we're going to say that the velocity can be broken down okay into vertical and horizontal components correct and that's what we did we broke it down into its vertical and horizontal components okay and as this object flies through the air then we can go about solving for it okay so what we did yesterday was we did the first two scenarios that uh, we could use to solve okay so I'm gonna erase this and uh, I'm gonna talk about those two scenarios okay here we go sorry okay so uh, we said that uh, the first scenario that we're gonna look at is an object that starts on the ground and ends up on the ground it's a perfect parabola and we said this is Delta X which is your range this is delta y, which is your max height. Okay, so your delta y, max height. Okay, and delta x is your range horizontally. Okay, all right. <clears throat> now, what we did yesterday was um, uh, we talked about how velocity in terms of x and y, the x component of velocity stays the same. And the reason it stays the same is because there is no force that is causing it to slow down. So why should it slow down? It's Newton's first law, right? Object in motion will stay in motion. The vertical component of velocity changes due to gravity. Changes due to gravity. So of course, I'm going to have maximum velocity here and minimum velocity. The VY component at the top of my motion is zero. That's what we said. And this right here, so that vy right here and that vy right there, believe it or not, in a perfect parabola, are equal to each other, should be equal to each other. So that y component there and that y component there are the same, in only in a parabola, remember, not in any other motion. Okay? Okay. And then what we said was that uh, we divided our formulas into the following. We said vix in the x direction is delta x divided by t. This is the x direction, x, okay? And in the y direction, we said that the formulas we're going to use are delta y, which equals to vi, y, t, 
plus half AT squared, delta Y, which equals to VFYT, minus half AT squared, uh, A equals to VFY minus VIY divided by T, and VFY squared, which equals to VIY squared, plus 2A delta Y. So these are the formulas that we're going to use to solve for our projectile motion. This is in the Y direction. This is in the X direction. Okay. Okay. So far so good. We're going to erase this because I only have 15 minutes to, uh, to do two questions. All right. So the first one that we're going to do is, let's say it's... Uh, the cases that we said are the scenarios. The first scenario, which is an object starts on the ground, ends up on the ground. Let's give an example of uh, a person kicks a ball, okay, so with a velocity of, let's say, 12 meters per second, okay, at an angle of 26 degrees. <clears throat> so what I, uh, what we want to remember is because my velocity is going upward, velocity is upward and positive, and my acceleration is in the opposite direction, and it's going downward, so it should be negative. We need to remember that. Okay? So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to draw our vector. So this is our vi, and then we're going to divide it up into its x and y components. So there is vi 12 meters per second. There is your 26 degrees. This is your vi x, and this is your vi y. Correct? And then using SOHCAHTOA, we're going to figure out what my vi x and my vi y components are. So for VIX, who can tell me what we're going to use? VIX is going to be cos or sine? Yeah, it's going to be cos. It's going to be cos of 26 times VI, which is 12. Can somebody tell me what that is, please, quickly? Okay, and the VI Y component, of course, if this is cos, this is going to be sine. Sine of 26 times 12, and that is your VI Y component. So who can tell me what those two are? So 10.5. And this one, five point three. Okay, five point three. So that's the first step in in solving any of our projectile motion questions is to figure out what my x component is and what my y component is. It's the first step. Okay. Now. The second step that we're going to do, and after we've done this, is to figure out my time. And for all projectile motion questions, we'll have to figure out how long it takes for this object to be in the air. And most of the time, the questions you're going to get are going to be, firstly, what is the time of flight? <clears throat> okay. Uh, B, uh, what is the range? How far away did it land? Okay. And C, what is maximum, maximum height? In, in most likely in these situations, those are the three questions you're probably going to get. Okay, so let's say these are the three that I'm solving today. Okay, so first things first, I figure out what my X and Y components are. Second, I figure out my time. And to figure out my time, I'm going to do delta Y, which equals to VIYT plus half AT squared. <clears throat> okay, now delta Y, as we said, is because my object starts on the ground, ends up on the ground, I have neither in my whole motion gained or lost any height. My displacement in terms of y direction is zero. So that's why this is going to be zero, because my displacement in terms of my y direction is zero. <clears throat> Your vy component is going to be 5.3 times t plus half times 9.8 times t squared. Okay, so you can have zero, which equals to 5.3t. Okay, and this is going to be negative 9.8 minus 4.9 t squared. Okay, now we said that we can factor this out. <clears throat> so this becomes 5.3 minus 4.9 t. This right here is going to be t1, which equals to 0, which we know that. This is t1 right here, 0. This is going to be t2. So we're going to say 0 equals to 5.3 minus 4.9 t. 4.9 t equals to 5.3. t equals to 5.3 divided by 4.9, what is your T2? Who can tell me, please? 
<clears throat> hmm? So 1.08 seconds. So this is how long the ball was in the air. Okay? Now this is part A of the question. Now part B of the question is, where did it land? How far away did it land? Okay? So we're going to say uh, delta x, which equals to vix times t. Okay? Delta x, which equals to vix 10.5 times 1.08. What do you get for your delta x? Eleven point three four meters. This is part B of the question. Okay, so we figured out our x component, y component, time, and the range. How far away this object is going to land? Okay. Okay, so the last part of this is to figure out, the last part of it is to figure out how high this object is going to go. Okay, so I'm going to erase some of this stuff up here. Okay. So we're trying to figure out my maximum height, part C of the question. <clears throat> max height. And to do the max height, uh, we're saying that my max height is going to happen right there at the center. And then what we said was that the y component of velocity at the max height is going to be 0. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do the following equation, v f y squared which equals to vi y squared plus 2a delta y. So, of course, if I look at half of this motion right here, this is going to be 0, okay? This is going to be 5.3 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times delta y, okay? What is 5.3 squared? Hmm? 28.9. Point zero nine minus nineteen point six delta y. Bring it over to the other side. Nineteen point six delta y, which equals to twenty eight point zero nine delta y equals to twenty eight point zero nine divided by nineteen point six. What is your delta y? What do you get? What do you get for your maximum height? One point four two, one point four three meters. So this is how high my object will go in its motion. So we figured out x range, we figured out y how high it goes, and we figured out t one and t two. We figured out my x and y components v i x, v i y. Does that make sense? <clears throat> this is our first case, first scenario where an object starts on the ground, ends up on the ground, we are neither losing any height nor gaining any height. Cool? Okay, perfect. <clears throat>